This is the chair we're about to start on. A number of processes involved and we'll go through them step by step with you. The first thing we will do with any chair that comes in is to examine the structure of the chair, make sure that it is structurally sound and the simplest way of doing that maybe is to turn it upside down. And we we'll just examine the joints and do what Gary will do on any other. So once we're happy that the structure is sound, the next step in the process is to clean down the chair and we use a mixture of vinegar and water and the purpose of the vinegar and water is to remove any old residues of uh, furniture polish that may be on the chair that could possibly interact with the finish paint and once the chair is complete completely washed the next step then is to start sanding the chair and in the process of sanding we don't remove the varnish completely, we're just sanding down with either a P, P120 or a P100 grist sandpaper and the purpose of that is to provide the key for our primer. And the sanding is done very simply then afterwards. It isn't the, again I stress, you do not, you don't sand this completely down. You are providing a key, which basically means you're not removing the varnish, but you have sanded it so it's not dead smooth anymore, and that provides the key then for our primer. So the whole chair then needs to be sanded, making sure that when you are sanding, you get into all the cracks and crevices with the sandpaper. And it is only as I'm doing it there. You do not need to remove the varnish completely. And you can see from that that is more than enough for sanding because the, 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 the primer doesn't require the varnish to be removed. Primer. The primer here is Zimmer, Z I M M E R one two three, Bullseye one two three. But this is designed then to stick to the actual varnish. It's it's vital. When you're spraying, we only spray one coat, most people, I would assume, will only be brushing this on. If you're brushing it on, you, you, you will need two coats. And I'll just give you an idea as to why you'll need two coats. You're, ne you're never going to apply one coat of this and get every single little piece of wood covered between the brush strokes. You, there isn't enough on. Whereas if that was sprayed on, that will be it finished. You don't need to do it again. The chair now is completely dry and is ready for the first coat of uh, paint. Now before you would do that, you would run your hand over the product, whatever it is, just to make sure that there aren't any rough spots that you what we use then to sort that out is, you can buy these pads in any paint shop. These are very useful, you don't show them away. These are perfect now for what I want to do here. Just give them a very, very light run on each one of those. And now it is completely ready then for first coat. Uh, the paint that we use is Fleetwood down here. It's uh, water-based and in most cases it's satin wood or eggshell finish. We will apply two coats because we spray it on. You will find if you're hand painting this at home, you may need to apply three coats of so, finish paint. Uh, here is completely finished, ready, and the down and Gary now is just going to start spraying on the first coat of paint, which is a sage green. Customer's choice, we're matching the chair that we have done here already for her. Here is an identical chair to the chair that we're working on that you just see the thing primed and I'm just going to show you now how we would do material on that. We are not a posters but we do cover 
these seats because they are removable. And simply by lifting, I've li we've loosened out the screws, but they're usually secured underneath with some brackets or screws coming up underneath. So we just remove that, and that is the cover. So what we've done here is started to remove some of the material. Now for this, you don't need any specialized equipment. They're staples. I don't know if you, if you can pick up that they are just regular staples. Now once you have that removed, as you can see, there is yet another layer of material. I'm not going to remove it. It looks quite good. But we just flip it over and we take a look at that. And that is in perfect in good order. And we would then from this moment now choose a new piece of material and start to cover that. In a lot of cases, there can be numerous covers of material on a chair. The foam is usually very good underneath. Now in this case we've stripped, we stripped off one and we showed you how to remove the, the one coat of uh, material. So we're left with this. We're very happy to just cover that over again. But in some cases, you might like to remove the material, all the material, back down to the foam and you may even decide to replace the foam. Now if you do all that, you can purchase these squares of foam in Limerick, in Carews, C-A-R-E-W-S, in William Street, that's about six or seven euro for that. It is obviously fire retardant foam as it should be. And if you wanted to do that, you can do that. Supposedly you did do that. All you would simply do is you stripped off the material, go back down to the board, and you just place the board on that, put a marker, just draw it, and just simply cut it and you have a new piece of foam that's laid on it and you just cover that as I'm about to show you how to do that now. So this is the material the customer asked us to put on, she just had a piece of material and uh, I've, what I've done here is laid it out. I laid this down on the piece of material and what I'm looking for here is approximately, I don't know if you're in inches, three inches of material three inches of material allowed so that we can fold inches, inches, three inches, about 70, 75 mil of material. Now, when there is a pattern and you're covering a couple of chairs, you, don't, you want them to be the same more or less. So you just simply lay it down on the material. And what you're looking for here is you want to make sure that the material and, and the, that the pattern, I should say, is running straight. In other words, it's not left down crooked. And what tells you that simply is the material itself. So the majority of you will have, I would imagine, a stapler similar to that, <coughs> which is fine. So we're gonna start in the middle, and you're just gonna put one staple. That holds that down. If you find, which you will find in some cases, the wood underneath can be very hard, and give it a tap of a hammer down. And you can continue on in that vein across that area there. Usually, you put two to three staples. Now, you do not go into the corner with these staples. You would stop at least, again, in inches, two to three inches back from the corner with the last staple there. And I'll show you why that is done like that for a reason. I've got the material on, feels good, looks good, corners, so to start the corner, different ways of doing this, some guys will do a fold like that, and a fold back around like that, and there's another method then, you can just do in from the centre, and pull on the centre, I prefer this one, Pulling, I'm just putting strain there. One staple. That holds it. Put down your gun. Now, what you're doing now is you're doing a fold 
we're just folding the material do it nice and tight pull it down with your hand and pulling it back in and from there you can put a couple of staples then along oh, I'll go now it's kicking it down there just give them a little tap in doesn't matter if you bend it now back again just turn it this way that you can get you can see what I'm doing it takes a bit of practice and I'm just putting a fold back there again pulling on the material pretty tight and again a couple of staples on that and hold that same thing again each corner start it again Then when you flip it over, you've got a really tight, not too tight, just strain, pulling, pattern looks good, and that's your seat cover covered. Now, all upholsters will use this mesh, we don't have it, but what we do, we can cover it underneath if we wished. We usually will just trim off all these longer edges of material here. Just going to scissors, just go around them. If you leave those on underneath, your chair and you don't trim them off they will hang down and you will see them uh, the chair is now completed painted and is dry so we are about now just to put in the cushion which we did earlier for you so it's quite simple you just put it in place make sure it's in place flip it over just to make it convenient to put in the screws Thank you.